All right, I think today we can do not just a uh, update, but also a proper demo of the whole thing and how it's supposed to work. Um, essentially, this is a not innovative software. People have done a ton of things like it. I'm just doing it because it's a fun project and I like doing this kind of stuff. And you know, maybe it'll be something I'll use or something else. Who knows? Uh, but this basically uh, analyzes audio, and then based on some of that analysis data, it can control LEDs. Um, like the old Radio Shack light organ, for those of us old enough to remember those. Uh, in any case, um, the camera picture you can see has um, six LEDs on it that represent the three layers of the LED box that I built that's in the other room. We're in my office right now, so uh, we can't look at the box. Um, and it's broken up into um, three sections of two. So each two LEDs represents one of the layers on the box. Um, and using this test interface, we can actually manipulate those LEDs in real time. This is just uh, doing a little rainbow color thing by hand. Uh, and then of course we can also run a rainbow uh, animation that goes through different colors and you can see that working. Uh, this was all done originally when I was just testing stuff to make sure it worked. Um, this controls, these don't do anything right now, but something like this will be part of the system for configuring the frequency analysis engine and its uh, six uh, frequency analysis bands available. Um, normally we'll be working from a palette here where we can build up chains of operations that take analysis data and then control something. In this case, we're gonna be controlling LEDs. And in the picture here, we'll uh, consider the top LEDs there to be the bottom layer of the box, middle being the middle, and the ones near the bottom there are the top layer. Sorry, I have them backwards. Uh, in any case, let's go ahead and just connect something up. So we'll take a, uh, a chain, we create an empty chain here, and we'll call this chain um, bottom layer. Right, let's just make it make sense with our demo here, top LEDs, all right and we'll add a frequency band node. This is configurable to take frequency band 0, 1, or 2, uh, mid or lows, mid, and highs. We'll stick with the lows now. Um, and then after this, we will add in a zone color output uh, node. So this is going to take the data from the frequency analysis band 0 and pass it off to a zone color. And we should start seeing those two top LEDs uh, move around as I talk because they're taking the audio and they're just sending it right to the color. Um, so it immediately any changes to the volume uh, or the magnitude of the band zero uh, analysis data uh, immediately affects the LED. Um, we can add another one and put this, actually, let's just do this. Let's change the, uh, oh, not the frequency band, let's change the zone that we're sending this to. So instead of those top two, we'll change it to one and we'll see that it changes the middle LEDs now instead of those top LEDs. And to finish the exercise, we'll just change this to zone two and we'll see that now that it's affecting those ones there and not the other ones. Um, so that's a good example of that. Um, so what I will do is I'll load up a pre-configured uh, set of chains here, um, the ones that I've been using for my normal uh, demos that you've seen, uh, which will take the lows and send it to the, uh, in this case, the top LEDs, the mids to the middle, and the high ends to the uh, LEDs on the bottom there. So go ahead and load up. I've also obviously finished up implementing the file browser so that we can actually save uh, and load particular uh, files. Um, so we'll load this three F bands peak chains file that I've already got existing and now we have them doing their thing. Um, I'm gonna turn on some music uh, as opposed to speaking and we can see that uh, going on. And then after that, I'll talk a little bit about what those nodes are in the middle there. So you can kind of see there's activity on a variety of the LEDs based on sonic content in the music. Um, and the way these are set up is I've taken the three sections, the three zones, and we're uh, having each of those zones cover 
a particular uh, set of frequency or set of colors within the whole spectrum. So the bottom layer is going to go from red up to a third of the color spread, middle layer will cover the second third, and the top layer will cover the third. Um, so we won't talk about the snooze for now, but we'll, uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, scale. So uh, we'll take the full range of, a, of the data that we have and we're going to scale it down to be a range of 85. So for the bottom, the middle, and the top, they all have a uh, 85 in for the scale amount. That is one third of the color range that we have. Um, and then the offset then takes that scaled data and uh, adds an offset to it so that uh, the bottom layer takes up one third section of the colors, and the middle layer takes up the next third section of colors, and the top layer takes up the uh, top third. So again, if we go in here, we'll see that the offset for the bottom layer is zero, the offset for the middle layer is 85, that's one third through, and then this one will be 170, which is two thirds through. Uh, SLU, that's just a cool little thing. So instead of values jumping immediately to a new value um, for something visual like this, uh, sometimes it's nice to have it slowly move from one value to another. Uh, in this case, the, if a value comes in that's higher than the previous values, it's going to immediately jump to that. And then if a value comes in that's lower, it's going to slowly degrade uh, down to that. Um, like a audio meter, if you've ever seen you know, meters that are measuring your audio, that's often how they work. Um, they just uh, look better than jumping all around. Um, that's it. Uh, I've also uh, added the features for rearranging the chain order. This doesn't matter in operation, it's just a visual thing. Uh, so these buttons, uh, which are, uh, my whole UI is gonna get tossed out and we'll get a new whole UI at one point. But um, yeah, these buttons can be used to move things around. So I'll move this bottom layer uh, chain up one. You'll see it's the second one now, move it up again, and now it's on the top. Um, and move it back down again. Uh, again, this doesn't change anything, um, but what we can, what does change things, if we change the order of these nodes that are doing the processing. Um, it's all math, and so obviously, as you know from a variety of different math things, uh, changing the order of it changes how the outcome is. Um, so we can we can move them just by using these buttons. Um, slid the offset over here to scale before scale, and now before slew even. Um, we have to look at the data and the LEDs to figure out whether it's going to be interesting or not and whatnot. Um, yeah, uh, and of course, as you saw previously, we can uh, delete. Uh, a process here. So now that last one uh, isn't doing any slewing, it's just going to jump from the values, boom, boom. Matter of fact, let's go just delete all of the slews out of here, and now we've got some very jumpy stuff. You can actually see the colors are changing more rapidly and not very um, uh, smoothly like they did before. I'll reinsert those nodes. Uh, we just use the little button here between the nodes to add a new one. Gives us the nodes that are available for this place. Uh, and we'll put in a slew. Put another slew in. And I'll put the last slew back in. Yeah, just a little smoother. Um, that is it. So we've got uh, all of the editing. You can add chains. You can uh, delete chains. You can reorder chains. You can add nodes. You can delete nodes. You can reorder nodes. Uh, you can load and save a collection of these. Um, at some point, I, su I suppose I'll, I'll allow loading and saving of the data for an individual node so that if you have a node configured in a particular way and you want to reuse it, you can just load that up again. Uh, I'm going to redo the whole UI so it's prettier. Um, and got a new analysis engine hopefully coming this weekend, uh, which will give me the six bands of uh, frequency analysis with the center frequencies for each of those bands being configurable and the width of the analysis data uh, also being configurable. Um, and then lastly, uh, or not lastly, but uh, next, creating some more node types, uh, like an average, maybe some kind of momentum-y kind of thing, which is like a slew but different. Uh, imagine if um, you push something a little bit, it picks up, it has speed, and then if you push a little bit, it picks up more speed and kind of has a momentum. Uh, so something like that maybe, um, and uh, oh, and then uh, currently we only have one control that you can do to the LEDs, and that is set a color for a particular zone, um, and I'll implement a whole bunch more commands for the uh, color side of the LED side of things, 
uh, and we'll put in more uh, nodes for controlling those things. Simple one might be brightness. I'm also thinking about maybe being able to use analysis data to drive uh, some kind of animations. Um, so let's say you have a, a, a rainbow that's slowly moving or something like that and then uh, along those momentum route that I was talking earlier, let's say you have something that's got a threshold to it, when something crosses a threshold it pokes at the momentum thing and then it causes that animation to go faster for a little bit and then when it doesn't get poked again that slows down and loses that momentum and goes back to a normal rate. Um, yeah, a bunch of ideas that I'll be able to start thinking about and playing with now that we've got all of the pieces in place. Um, and and uh, yeah, really excited for the next couple of weeks work on this, um, getting it to be something more useful. Uh, I want to rebuild the box I have. The, a lot of the uh, glue, hot glue that I used temporarily is coming off. Things are falling apart. And I'd like to build a second box. So uh, I also want to get some LEDs that are more densely packed than the ones I have. Um, play with those as well. But uh, I think that's it. I think that's the complete demo of how things work and the ideas behind it. Um, uh, this is a standalone version, just a little app that's a standalone version. Um, the actual version I'm interested in producing is a plugin that one could insert into their digital audio workstation or any other audio software that allows you to use uh, audio plugins. I'm currently just generating a VST3 uh, plugin, but I'm using the Juice framework so I can produce pretty much all the plugin formats. Um, that's it. Hit me up if you want to uh, check this out. I can, if you want to build the hardware, it's just an Arduino board and some LEDs plugged into a USB port with the software talking to it. So, ciao.